Good afternoon. Let's have a little more fun with animation. Scott sent me some more FBX files to play with, uh, and let's take a look at those. This is what we've got using the simple animation uh, script. You can turn the character around and see it from different angles, and you can play the various animations uh, with the buttons, and this is all good. Um, so he would like to see us implement that in a more character sort of way, kind of like we had with the simple animation system. So let's see what it's going to take to implement this kind of stuff, uh, taking it through the animation controller design and setup and layout, and then the code to drive that. Along with the FBX files, I got this PDF file that tells me what we're trying to accomplish here. Let's get to that. Let's make a new animation controller for the assassin. Create an animation controller and we'll call this, what are we going to call this? I don't know. Because I already used the word assassin for the simple one. Um, let me, maybe I'll rename that one simple. Uh, let's rename this one just assassin. All right. Here we go. This is our thing, and we want to make that same flow chart. So we're going to start with idle, and idle is going to be the base of everything that we're, we're going to do. Do, do, do. We're definitely not going to need that. Okay. Uh, from idle, we can go to run. Let me get this out of the way. Uh, from idle, we can go to walk. There's a walk. Hmm. Okay. I usually, I like to simplify my, my spider web a little bit, right? Um, let's make idle, go to walk. Idle goes to run. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna start by imitating exactly what we've got, um, Idle can go to special. Uh, idle can go to attack one. Idle can go to wounded. And I'm making it look just like we had in the PDF. Because um, Really, this work that I'm doing here is stuff that the animator can do themselves. So the animator gave me that PDF. Uh, so all the animator needs to do is do exactly what I'm doing here, that, like they made with the PDF, um, and just that's what we're doing. Idle can also go to sword out, which they drew like this. So we can go, idle can go to sword out. Okay, and sort out can go to idle sword. Okay, and then uh, idle sword can do attack sword. Which we have like that. Boom. And also attack sword twirl. Make transition. Da, 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 da. Okay, and then idle sword can also go to sword in. That takes us back to idle. I don't know, like that. I think I've got that. Uh, and then there's these two animations over here. There's death and jump. That. Oops. We can get to from anywhere. Okay. Uh, that's, that's the setup. We just duplicated the PDF. Let's show the PDF again. So that's what we want to do. We want to just duplicate this in here. And ass assuming that your logic was, was good, when you put this together, this logic should work too. Now we're going to need some guidance on when to take these various branches. This is going to start to touch on something 
and that's sort of a, a, a common thing for me, something I'm going to mention over and over a lot, which is a little bit of programmer input is a good thing. Uh, at this point, I can already highlight something I want to change. I want to change this walk run cycle to this. I want the I want to delete this transition and instead, whoops, I didn't want that. Instead, say I'm going to go from walk to run. So you go idle to walk, walk to run. Um, I wanted to do that just because I was simplifying this chain because I know I can go to and from walk and run. All right, let's put the back. And now it's less of a spider web if I make you go backwards through walk on the way to idle. So I think that's a little bit of a nice little simplification there uh, that we could, we could do. And, and by suggesting it early on, you know, it's just a tweak to the flow chart. But if I make suggestions like I'm going to start making, when it is just a flow chart before the animations exist, it might drive changes in how the animations are designed and laid out and built before they are laid out and built. We need some parameters. They're over here. Uh, let's add a bool is walking. Let's add another one is running. We'll use those two to control this. So right here I want is walking is true is running is true does not have exit time okay so that'll take us from idle to walk to run let's go back from run back down to walk is is running is false and walk back to idle is is walking is false okay that should chain those three. Let's try them out. Um, I already created a script called test animation. And uh, we'll use that. I'll just go ahead and remove the simple animation. We'll use test animation, which is a script I showed before. And let's put our new assassin controller on our character. Let's see how we did. Uh oh, it, it transitioned on its own. Look at that, it transitioned on its own out of idle into the attack. <clears throat> Why did it do that? Um, it, it chose this one. It chose this branch uh, because the has exit time is marked and there's no conditions. So it it just did that on its own. Um, let's remove these. Has exit times from these. We want to trigger these. Okay. Let's try again, see if that fixed it. There you go. We're now idle looping. Good. And I can, can I walk? I can turn. Doesn't look like it's walking. Let's take a look at the script and see what's happening. Oh, what's this? I got a bogus parameter on there. Okay, Let's, hopefully that was the only bogus parameter. Let's see if that fixed it. There you go. All right, so now we've got the is walking and the keys can control whether we see that animation. How about is running? I put that in the shift key. Okay, so there's walking and running. All right, that's a good, that's a good step. What do we want to do next? Let's see what else we can hook up. We, we hooked up the jump before, so let's put that in. The jump we put, yeah, it's right here. Do jump, a trigger called do jump. Let's take a look at that, how we do that. Let's add 
a trigger called do a jump. And we'll put that on this transition. This is do jump. Okay, run that. Let's see if we can jump now. Okay. Oh, but at the end of do jump, we did not return back to idle, right? See that? That was something not in our flow chart, but we got to add it. Okay, so we'll just say make a transition back to idle. And this transition happens just on exit. So we finish the animation and then we'll just immediately go back to idle. So here we go. Let's try that. Jump, idling, walking, jump. So that takes us back to idle on the landing and take us back to idle from there to, to run, uh, to walk. Let's go all the way from run, run, jump, and then briefly idle walk back into run. Okay, um, we could, if we wanted to, recognize you could go from jump back to walk, right? Or jump straight to run um, without doing this walk through these other states. But uh, one of the things I, I like to try and do is keep the spider web down to a minimum. You can see that it's sort of becoming a spider web. Um, while I'm at it, I'm going to do the same thing for, for the death animation, um, which maybe you shouldn't, right? In a real game, you wouldn't go from death back to idle, but we want to see this over and over, so I'm going to add that in. I'm going to need a trigger for that, though. I don't have any way to trigger that, and I don't have any way to trigger these other animations that we've done. So um, I think it's time to start inventing some new script. Let's get a new script here. Assassin script. All right, what am I gonna do first? I'm gonna just copy my old test animation script and use that as a, hmm. I just inherit it. You want me to inherit it? Maybe, maybe I can inherit it. Okay, let's do that. Uh, right. So, if I'm going to inherit like so, I'm going to make some things virtual. Boop. Virtual. Oh, no, sorry, override, override. I'm gonna call base.update. Oh, they have to be public or protected at least. Okay, and protected, override, void, I don't know that I need to override fixed update. We'll see. We'll see if I need that. I'll make it virtual in case I do. I definitely want this though because I'm gonna read some other inputs. Um, so what I, I used space for uh, for the jump. What do we want to do next? What's our next What's our next animation that we want here? Let's see. Shall we do? Um, the attack. Let's do attack and then special and then wounded, I guess, and death. Let's do attack, special, wounded, death. Uh, okay, we well, can start right here. Let's do a trigger for death. Die. Trigger for die. I'll put that uh, for death, we'll call it die. Zoop. Let's put that in. Die. Okay. That's, that should do that one. Um, wounded, what do we, we need another trigger, right? A trigger for wounded, I'll just call it wound. All right, and so this one will go when wound fires. Note, when that one's done then, what are we gonna do? I think we'll have to go back to idle when we're done. And that'll be, um, that'll be on exit, we'll just, Play it and immediately go back. Special, uh, same thing, right? Let's do triggers for these. Trigger, special, 
trigger attack. Okay, and this one we're gonna do on special. This one we're gonna do on attack. And when he transitions back to idle for those. Okay, uh, and these should default to just exit time, so it's just gonna play them and come back. Now we just need to make our code do these four triggers. We have to choose some buttons. Yeah, okay, how about, yeah, I'm gonna follow my same pattern here. Follow my same pattern here, which may be a little bit on the redundant side. Uh, okay, whoop. Protected. I want access to that. Um, maybe a little, little bit on the redundant side. Is why do I need a bool? I set the bool. I if on the bool. The reason for that is um, this is just one way to read that bool. I might want to hook up a controller someday, and so I don't want to turn this into some kind of nasty if statement that says if the space button is down or this controller is setting or or it's an AI that wants to jump or whatever. I'm abstracting it mentally. I'm saying, setting aside that there is something I might want to do. So I might want to die. Uh, do die. I might want to die. Um, and then, so, that, so this is me saying, I might want to die. And this is, this is one way I decide to die. There might be mother, there might be other other ways I make that decision, um, and, and this this little this sort of separates it into three pieces. The first piece is there is the possibility that I could die. The next is these are the conditions in which I would die, and then the last one is has have I decided to die? If I have decided to die, how do I make that happen? Right, and so by separating it into these three separate little blocks like this. That allows me to tweak this, and ultimately what I would want to do in, in a real engine, I would set this off into a data structure and create accessors so that AIs could trigger these, or code could trigger them, or controllers could trigger them, and that could feed in from anywhere. And so it wouldn't just be sitting here like this. Uh, it would actually be separated. I'm just prepped myself to be ready to separate those. Okay, so that's one. Another trick I'm highlighting here is the empty scope. I created just a scope. There's no if statement on these curly braces, but that's legal. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm gonna now do another one. And I don't want this variable to accidentally get reused down here. I want a new variable. It's, what am I gonna call it? Uh, do special. Do special, I'm gonna do next. Now I might, if I didn't have these curly braces, right? It, I, I copied and pasted this code. Let's show, let's show what happens. If I don't have those curly braces, let's take them out. Let me just start, start right back from scratch here. Check it out. Okay, I'm gonna do the special now. Let me say handle die. Handle special. All right, and I say to myself, that's just the same thing. I'm gonna copy paste it. I copy paste it. I'm gonna call it something else. Do special, right? And I go, okay, what's, this, what's the key for that? Let's say it's key S, S for special. Oh, and die, better not be spacebar. Let's make it D for die. So D for die, wait, wait, now I'm using WASD. We'll have to come up with something else. So how do you, how do you die? You die with uh, X, die with X, okay. So I'm gonna die with X. I'm gonna special with tilde. Special with tilde. Okay, and so I think, yeah, I'm done. Oh wait, oh wait, oh wait, right here. Uh -huh, almost forgot, right? And I'll speak to this, uh, was it do special? Or did I just say special? I think I just said special. We'll have to check. We'll have to check what I say, special. All right, and then you say, yeah, hey, good job, all done. Um, only there's a bug, I left myself a bug here. And that's why I like to do this. 
I like to put this in an empty scope because this is where the variable exists. This is only where the variable exists. And now, boom, the editor has flagged for me the error that I made. The error that I made was you forgot to copy paste that one. And these, these empty scopes protect me from making that mistake. Very common mistake when you're going to do a block of similar code like this. Okay, wound will be, I don't know, um, Z. Z is going to be wound. And I think I call it wound slash wound. Okay, yeah. Uh, and then last, last but not least, let's do an attack. Um, attack is pretty common. I'm, I'm feeling like maybe I want to do attack in the base class. Everybody wants an attack, right? Everybody wants an attack. Let's do that. Do attack. Attack, attack. Uh, and did I just, I just call it attack, attack. Checking. Called it attack. Okay. Uh, what co key code shall we use for attack? Um, enter, return, return, return for attack. Okay. All right, that's, uh, we're good to go. Um, let's put this on our character. All right, uh, test animation. Um, while I'm here, let me show you a, a trickety trick. I want to, what I'm about to do is I want to put the assassin on here. I'm going to remove this one. Uh, and that can be kind of annoying sometimes because sometimes I have parameters that I've set. Right now, I haven't. Um, but uh, if, if I had, like maybe there's a bunch of parameters that I've set up here and I'm going to have to copy and paste them over one by one, which can be a little tedious. There's a trick. If you set your you set your inspector to debug mode. Debug mode. You can now access this little button there. When it was in normal mode, you can't, you can't click that. But in debug mode, you can click this little button and it brings up a thing. And then you say, oh, I don't want to be test animation anymore. I want to be assassin. And it keeps your parameters. It keeps your parameters. Look at that. Okay. So that's a little trick. Uh, let's try it out. I want to put this. I want to put this on the side like I had before. So I want to. I want to sort of debug what's happening. We're idling. Let's walk around. I'm going to use my WASDs to walk around. I'm going to check my run cycle. Check my jump. Jump is good. Okay, what did we do? We did death. Did I put that on X? Oh, I died. X. Let's see it from this view. Oh, splat. Oh, splat. Okay. Uh, wounded with Z. Pow. Pow. Let's walk and wound ourselves. Uh-oh. Oh, oh we, we, can't get, we can't get wounded while we're walking. Can't get wounded while we're walking. What's up with that? We can go from wounded, we can go back in, right? But can't be wounded while we're walking. Why not? You see that in our layout. Our layout's got a, got a mistake, right? Um, we'll see the other one we did, special. Where'd I put special? Tilde? Did I put special on tilde? I thought I did. And I put some on tilde. It's not working. All right. Oh. No. No. Okay. How about enter? Okay. The attack worked. Uh, special doesn't seem to work. Did I set this one up? Special. Let's take a look over here. I did put it on tilde. Let's change the tab. Maybe the tilde key isn't as easy to use as I thought. Tab. There you go. 
Okay. I don't know, maybe the tilde key. We have to do something else to use the tilde key. Uh, maybe I got the wrong tilde key. I don't know. There you go. Tab. Special. Awesome. So let's, we're running, we're running, and hit the special. Go. Oh, wait, it doesn't work, right? Oh, you can't. You can't. Um, but certainly I can attack. I can attack while I'm running. Notice, look at this. I've got them registered, but it's not doing it. Now it will. <laughs> and it queued them up and everything. Uh, okay, so that brings us to sort of the limitations of doing it this way, where um, the animator gave me this flow chart and I implemented the flow chart uh, and it's obviously it's not right. So um, maybe with experience, a, a good gameplay programmer would have flagged that and would have told you that's not really going to work. Um, and, and this is why that's, that's not going to work. I mean, we just see you, you can't attack when you're walking would be the first question. This is a game design question. Maybe I can't. Maybe I have to stop to attack. But even then, now let's say I'm, I'm I will stop while, while I'm attacking. So how do I do that? I'm going to need to add this, this transition. It's a, uh, that's an attack, right? Oh, what about running? Yeah, you can do it while you're running. You can attack while you're running. So let's put that in. Attack. Okay. Um, that's a good start. Um, what about the special? We got to do the specials while you're one running. You got to do the wounded while you're running. Okay, we're gonna make we're gonna make a a, a, a freaking rat's nest out of it. Um, okay, here we go. That one is wounded. That one is special. Okay, we gotta go from run to special. Run to special. Okay, run to wounded. All right, I, I don't even know. Is that this one? No. Is that this one? Yeah. Okay. Run to wounded. Okay, good. Uh, all right. Cool. And, and now that I have such just a, a rat's nest here. Let's make some space. Let's spread this out a little bit. so We can see a little better um, what we're doing. Maybe organize it like that. How about that? That's better. It's a spider web, um, but hopefully that'll work. So, so let's take a look. Let's see if we can make that work out. Okay, walking, running, jumping. Cool. Let's do an attack. Attack. Back to it. Attack. Get back to running. Attack. Okay, cool. Let's do attack special. Right. Okay. So one of the, one of the problems, it queued them up for me, <laughs> which is super nice, except probably in a game. I don't want that. Um, I'll need to, I'll need to work my way around that. But for now, let's just see if we can do the sword section. Let's get the sword set up. Okay, what do we got here? From idle, I can pull my sword out. So let's make a bool for, I don't know, is sword out. If the sword is out, let's do this. So we'll say, um, is sword out. If the sword is out, we want to go here, and when this animation is over, go straight to there. And then if the sword is not out, if the sword is not out, is sword out is false, we want to go to there, and then when this animation is over, immediately go back to idle. So is sword out, it'll go pop, pop, and then loop here, and then 
when I put the sword away, it'll go pop, pop, and then start looping back here. Okay, and while I'm at it, let's, let's add this one. This is the attack. This is the attack when I'm in this state. And this is the special, let's say. The special when I'm in that state. Make sure that's not set. Make sure that's not set. And then these need returns back when we're done. Okay, so let's make is sword out something that we are supporting. Is sword out. What key is the sword toggler? And it is a toggler. Let's use backspace. Let's use backspace. In the fixed update, not a bad idea. Let's put it in the fixed update. Uh, let's do that. Override fixed update. I'm going to say bool um, sword toggle equals false. I'm going to say sword toggle equals. I, I'll, I'll do what I did before, which was if input dot get key down key code dot backspace. I didn't use backspace yet, did I? Um, no, I'm not using brackets for that. Okay, uh, sword toggle is true. And I'm gonna say, hmm. Bool, bool, uh, sword out. What is the current status of the sword out? Let's ask the animator. Uh, I think that is how that is done. Is sword out camel case, checking it, is sword out, yes. Okay, so if the sword is out, I'm gonna say now sword out. Uh, I'm gonna say if, if sword toggle. It's time to swap the sword. Uh, you know, I don't care if the sword's out or not until you wanna toggle it, so okay. If you wanna toggle it, when I do that, I'm gonna say sword out. I'm gonna toggle it equals not sword out. I'm gonna say, you know what, no. I'm gonna get not, I might, that might fool my viewer. So instead I'm gonna say manimator.setbool is sword out, comma, not sword out. There you go. That says more, that communicates more. I wanna set it to not, as opposed to setting it to not and then copying that in. Okay. I think we're good to go. Let's rock this thing. Put it side by side again. And go. All right, I'm idling. I'm walking. Let's pull out my sword, which was backspace. Whoosh. Backspace, put it back. Oh no, it's not working. Oh, it did. Yeah, I've run into this problem before. The fixed update is a terrible place to read the keyboard. So let's move that out of fixed update and put it up here. That should be fine. I don't need to put it in the fixed update. Okay, backspace, 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 backspace. Double tap, double tap. Okay, awesome sauce. Let's try an attack with the sword. Let's try the special with the sword. Okay, the animations play. Very nice. Um, but now we're left back with that same issue that we had before, which is let's walk. Wait, 
We can't walk. We can't wait. Why, why can't we walk? Because we don't have walk with sword. We, we don't even have that. Um, what do you want to do? <laughs> Let's put the sword away. Uh, put the sword away. Now we can walk. Okay, now we'll pull the sword out. Well, we can't do that. You can't pull the sword out while you're walking. You have to stop and then you can pull the sword out. Uh, yeah. So what we now have is a bit of a mess. And this is where I really want to highlight, again, the same statement as before. The programmer could have helped with this. Uh, it would have been a good idea to vet this spider web before the animator made the animations. And so, you know, I, for, for this particular example, this is something that's just, it's for an animation class. It's not for an actual game. So that's cool, right? You, no fault, no fault there. Um, but if we we're actually making a game, what you need to do is sit down with this flowchart, with the game designer and the programmer and the animator together. We need to go over this flowchart before these become animations. Because we've realized, first of all, we realized we're making spider webs already, and the spider web is going to get wicked. It's going to get wicked here in a minute when we go. Uh, the idle sword now is going to need a walk sword, a run sword. And we've got these two attack and special sword. We don't have wounded sword. We're going to need that. What about jump with sword? What about death with sword? A um, whole bunch of whole bunch more animations that we need to follow this model. And now that's where the animator needs to chime in and say, "Hold on, guys. You want you need me to make all those animations?" And the the programmer's like, "Well, yeah." Uh, and you know, maybe the the programmer's like, "And hold on, guys. Do I need to make this freaking spider web for this thing? Who's gonna?" Who's going to unravel this spaghetti? Uh, is the animator going to make this spaghetti? Is the designer going to make the spaghetti? Or am I going to have to make the spaghetti? Because I don't want to make this spaghetti. Um, and so that's where, I mean, I would have started us off with, um, with a different idea, which is maybe the, maybe the assassin just always has the sword out. <laughs> maybe we only have idle sword, walk with sword, run with sword, attack with sword. What is the purpose of pulling the sword in and out? Um, right? I mean, that saves us all a whole lot of work if we did that and see if that flies. Is that going to fly? And maybe the game designer or the animator, somebody says, no, we must. We must take the sword in and out for some reason. Okay, in that case, we're going to need a bunch more animations unless we come up with some other solution. Can we do an upper upper and lower body split where maybe the sword for most animations is only going to affect the right hand? Um, like when we pull out the sword, when we pull out the sword, can we play the exact same animation on the whole body except the right arm? Maybe the right arm is the only thing affected by the sword. Um, or maybe it's actually the same animation and we just make the sword appear. Maybe we play the transitional animation to pull out the sword. We play this and then the sword is just on and maybe we're now, can we, what if we just played this animation? Would that work? Probably not, right? You probably need a custom, at least a custom right arm. Maybe the right arm could walk different than the rest of the body. Um, I, I don't know, is that something we could pursue? We could try something like that. Um, but really, what you're asking for is you're gonna have to duplicate all of those. So essentially every possible animation needs two versions now. Um, and that will create a split between those two trees. And we're gonna wanna rethink encapsulating this into sub flow charts. One flow chart with the tree with the with the sword and another flow chart without the sword. And it can cross 
almost anywhere, right? Almost anywhere where those two flow charts can cross. Can you pull out the sword while you're walking? Can you pull out the sword while you're jumping? Can you pull out the sword while you're wounded? Um, some of them, yes. Some of them, no, right? Uh, so, yeah, it's going to become a mess. But that said, uh, the ask to hook these animations up, I think we've completed it. We have our walking around. We have our special. We have our attack. We have our die, oh, die, and our wound. Um, yeah, and the, the main feature I flagged that's going to create trouble is the sword in and out now is going to need like all kinds of sets of animation uh, that, that are missing, the walk cycles and the jumps and stuff. Uh, we don't have one when there's a sword out. Okay, uh, one last thing to think about. And it's again going to highlight the necessity of discussing this before going to great lengths. And that is what exactly is going on here. Uh, here. What's going on there? Uh, the player has moved dramatically away from where the root of that character is. Right, the character's root has moved away from their original position. Let's see it in the scene view. So we see the grid on the floor. Oops. I'm gonna. I don't know. Oh, side by side. We'll go side by side. That'll work. We'll see it in the scene view here. Boom. See how the character is knocked away. from their actual root, right? This is where the character actually is. The character's there. Um, if there's a, a collision capsule on there, the collision capsule is now way off from where the character needs to be. Um, if this is, a, if we're gonna get up from there, we're not standing in the right place. So this is, this is good for an animation starting point, um, but the, uh, the, well, what is it? Oh, okay. Um, but as we move forward, we would need a discussion about how we're going to make that actually work. Uh, another example maybe is the jump. Let's see if, what, what we do with the jump. Jump. Okay, let's jump and boom. Okay. So here's the jump, and the character's root is still down there. So. Um, how are we going to handle it if the character during this jump lands on something up higher and then needs to, we need to move that up. So there's, there's some code that needs to, to get in there as well as some discussion with how the animator wants to proceed. So that would be a separate topic. And uh, I'm just using that as an example of the conversations you need to have before you go to rigging and animation. Before you, you make this whole rig and you start writing, uh, start creating these animations, um, you should have a talk first about these topics. Um, it's all about communication and working together as a team. That's really the key. So, um, good example of some animation and, and a good example to use to hook up some stuff and show some features in Unity and how to do and also a really good example of the necessity to start with strong communication. Okay, until next time, I will see you out there later.